Hi, it's Lynn from Linny Seed Designs. Thank you for joining me today. I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator based in West Sussex in the UK. And I'm coming on to uh, create a slightly different version of this fabulous card. Now, it, um, this type of card was, uh, I think, first created or designed by another Stumping Up demonstrator called Susan Campfield. But I watched a video um, from another lovely uh, demonstrator called Lorna, Lorna's, Lorna's Crafting Corner. Um, check it out. And I recreated this card um, and she named it the Flying Finch um which is fabulous it uses the um dies from uh, sorry the celebrate with tags stamp set and i wanted to recreate this this fits into a standard c5 envelope so um i wanted to create my own now this is gorgeous thank you lorna for the and susan for the inspiration this was created with the lovely snow crystal stamp set and the sentiment is from brightest glow which is um, these are both in the annual catalog and then rather than using designer series paper i i used some new products from the mini catalog easy to miss they are the Abundant Beauty um, Decorative Masks. Now they're on page 47. They're here. And I have created um, projects with the um, with this. And my last video, um, I oh, another sorry, this is one of the cards that I you uh, we created um, in my September classes, this one. And I used another one of the masks uh, in another project that I used because I think these are brilliant. They are absolutely fabulous. You get snowflakes. You get the layering um, dies to make the uh, sunflowers. So you've got three layers to make the sunflowers and then the leaves. And then you get, well, this is showing up, this sort of herring um, hound's tooth and then an autumnal one. So that's three, six masks for £10 in the UK, which I think is really good value. So we're using the snowflakes and I think that's lovely um, <clears throat> and actually the this one was created with um, balmy blue base but I'm going to use completely um, tone on tone so I've got misty moonlight um, some misty moonlight card here and some uh, basic white and we'll just get on haven't even cut it in advance so i thought i would go through and so you could see i've got my custard trimmer here i think i actually need to put new blades in but let's see if we can get a nice cut so this hopefully this is on camera i need to cut this down to um In half so 14.8 so they are both the same size and then that needs cutting down to 18 centimeters and actually when I did mine I did the scoring together but I've cut that apart now so let me just make that 18 
and on each of them I'm going to score at this is centimetres and that's one of the things I love about this trimmer it's got a score blade as well so four and a half nine and a half and it's very easy to see we've got a ruler up here and a ruler down the bottom so whichever way you prefer to do it and then 13 and a half we will cut this one down as well cut it down to 18 and then Four and a half, nine and a half, and thirteen and a half. I have got another piece. What did I do with that? That needs to be cut down to the same. So fourteen point eight by nine so that's going to be the front panel and then i've got a bit of basic white which is cut slightly shorter and we'll go on there i am going to heat emboss and do some blending on that bit we can take this trimmer out of the way now um, and we're going to do some, uh, what are we going to do first? Let's just use our mask first. Now, if you're not very confident with the mask and holding it in place, you can um, tape it down. I'm not going to be precious about it. So I've got my Misty Moonlight and my blue brush. I'm going to be mindful of uh, not going across that. And I'm just going to use my mask and add a little bit of blue. I don't want it very dark. I just want... And you can see I'm going, I shouldn't, when I come on camera, I get very nervous and I don't actually finish my sentence. I know, sentences, I know, noticed that the other day. So I'm going in both directions and that's because I find if you just go in one direction, um, you don't get the same effect. So how pretty is that? And I'm just going to move that across. Add a little bit more glue. Uh, a little bit more blue. Blue, blue. And I'm going to do the same. And you could actually layer these again, you could go across, I'm just doing it very simply, just for ease. And you can see through, you can see if you're putting in, if you're, you know, putting on enough colour. As I said to you, I just want it very pale and subtle. And I am going to go right the way along i'm going to come off this end here because i want to use all of this i'm going to trim it down for panels and then what's left i'm going to use as the uh, label so this piece of card i didn't share that with you the basic white it is 14.3 
and it's by 21 centimeters so that's that i'm happy with that very simple very plain now i'm going to bring back my trimmer so that you can do all the cutting in one go i am going to close that we need it again but i don't want anything falling in it it has it happens and then i'm going to trim this down so it should as it is 14.3 it's already the right um, width and I want two pieces at three and a half centimeters and two pieces at four and I want my design to run together so I'm going to actually cut that at three and a half and I'm going to do four doesn't matter there three and a half and four and I'm using one of the something fancy dies to create a label and I'm going to do that about there and then out of one of these scraps of paper I'm going to use one of the stylish shapes dies to cut a banner so I'll just pop off the, to the side and get that done so here we go and then I can Decide which way around I want that. And we'll just stamp our sentiment. I haven't put my my labels on the back, but you can see where that's going to go. It doesn't matter if it's not quite in the middle, but hopefully that's straight. I've missed the seam there. Just going to get the marker. I'll draw that in. Am I happy with that? No, I'm not. Did I allow myself? I've got, luckily, I've got spare. I can do a second. So, that's one, the new markers, I don't know whether I've ever said anything to anybody, these are the new Stamping Right markers. The bullet end is actually thicker than it used to be. So that didn't work, whereas before if I missed stamp something, I could generally just fill it in, it was very thin. So that's worth remembering now. So we shall do that again. bit more of a press there we go that is absolutely perfect that time never mind that can go in the bin and that's us finished no it isn't still need to use that in the blending brush don't i right um so we will do the heat embossing get all the stamping it out of the way and then we can do the folding and the adding so we need our heat tool and white embossing powder See, I'm not even I'm not very organized we've got some Versamark and we've got our little embossing body pad there and I'm going to use that to try and get in case I've got any cream or lotions and potions on those fingers helps to get rid of marks 
doesn't really matter that much because the snow crystal it is such a beautiful big stamp now if you've got the stamparatus you could use that i am just going to use it with one of these big blocks i didn't clean that very well did i let's get this look a new a new pad it's clean so let's clean that for some reason it's got embossing powder i've managed to got to get embossing powder on the stamp oh squeaky squeaky <laughs> right i christened that that brand new um chamois last weekend so we are going to let's ink that up nicely and with a large stamp like this it's better to have it laying flat and add the verse mark now i'm being very generous with the verse mark <clears throat> it's a fabulous ink and I'm going to come in from the corner there. I can see where that is. I'll turn my card. I'm going to come in from there as well. So I've got it coming from two sides. Lovely. Let's pop that out the way. Turn that over and I'm going to just pop that on. So beautiful. It's amazing how far this goes, um, this embossing powder. But I love it. I It's one of the things that made me fall in love, heat embossing, with, with card making. I just still think it's amazing. Let's just add a little bit more on there and make sure we've got total coverage. Perfect. Yep. I'll put the lid on there. Pop that out of the way so I don't blow it away. And I've made myself a little foil is embossing box, I guess you could call it. So I'm going to heat the gun up, um, excuse the noise, heat the gun up. Um, and when it's hot, I will bring it to the card. I don't know if you can hear me, but it really is quite magical. Um, heat embossing but if you if you um, it's better to get it the get it hot and bring it to the card hot because it, it helps um, the card not to warp it done and I find this it not only protects my work surface but it also helps stopping the card from warping don't know whether it does or not 
I guess you just find out what's best for you. Make sure that there's no um, nothing on there. And I'm going to bring back my Misty Moonlight and my brush. Um, and I'm actually going to start, I'm not going to put any more ink on there just yet. You let, let this sort of cool down a little. Let's put some on there. And just go over the whole card. And you can see the snowflake kind of emerging. Now I'm going to keep it quite light. I'm not pressing down too hard on the card. I'm just letting it, because you can... You can get splotches and that's fine but if you start gently you can then build up the colour as much as you like. And you can see I'm tapping off but then I'm concentrating. I quite like to get the darkness around the edges. And it's just a case of building up that colour and making sure the stamped image is covered. And any, any white spots, or I quite like it to be a little bit faded. There is a little bit splodge there. I don't know how I did that, but it doesn't matter because that's where I can put my, um, my sentiment and it will be hidden. And then the magic with either um, just a cloth or a bit of tissue to buff the stamped image and you take the ink off the, the, the embossing powder and it just helps make that pop. There we go. Look at that. And then you can add a little bit more colour if you want to. So I'm just going to go back in along that bottom edge in that corner there. And again, I'm just going to look how that pops off the page. Just get that off around the edge there. I absolutely love that technique. So I'm going to put that out of the way. How pretty is that? Fabulous. I think that, that's it. Lovely. So we've got all our pieces here, and I will put this all together for you. Right to one side. Now I'm going to just use a bone folder. And I'm going to um, fold all of these scores. So I want to fold back the flap, the panel that is nearest. So you've got a wider panel here. You've got two the same either end and then a wider and a thinner panel. So I'm going to score towards 
the thinner panel so a valley do another valley reinforce that and then this one is going to be a mountain so you end up with that hopefully that makes sense and this is going to be i'm going to use that bit to stick that panel on so we do exactly the same with this one so it's going to be one side or the other so a valley reinforce that well a valley and then this one is a mountain so you have exactly the same there and a really good tip i don't know if this was lorna who did this but actually this these you flatten it out let's get that straight flatten it out and this is going to be um the bit that you stick this panel to a really good tip is to use some tape i've got some low tack tape here and i'm just going to stick those next to each other line it up fingers and thumbs line that up like that and stick that across there because then you can just it holds it in place while you add some glue and if you're if you've watched my videos before you know my glue of choice and we have lots of options um, at stamping up and of course is um, wet glue um, I just need I need it for wiggle room so this panel is exactly the same size as that so you can lay that down give that a good old press And then these are the two panels that we're going to stick our bits on. Now, wrong way, that way, that way, that way. So you want the wider one like that and the thinner one like that. Oh, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty, pretty. You could obviously you could decorate with designer series paper um, rather than create this is like creating your own really um, but this is great i think the original card that susan did was i think she named it a flying seagull i think because it was sort of squat and square um, this I think I'm not sure I'd remember the name so I think I'm just going to call them winged cards see there we are I didn't put that on straight but because it's wet glue it gives you a little bit of time to wiggle and get it in place who else has started making their christmas cards my all of the cards that we made in my september class were christmas cards and i went to a fabulous uh retreat put on by my lovely team leader and friend emma goddard and that was fabulous that was last weekend and that was christmas projects I'm kind of in the mood now, which is 
fabulous so that goes on there i do like the tone on tone and the dark i like both of them um, i'd say this is quite simple i've i've kept mine very simple one two layers um and then a little bit of em embellishment now this label it's obviously too short to go behind but if you snip it you can extend it nobody would know if you didn't tell them so i'm just gonna Have a little bit sticking out. Um, I can actually add that with a little bit of glue. And then I'm going to stick those on with dimensionals. So let's do this. Actually, I didn't measure how far out they can come. I think that will do for there. This is where I fiddle with it because I haven't got it dead in the middle try and get those straight let's see use the good grid lines limb like that perfect now yes lovely let's get some dimensionals I think we might have up here in my little pot but I need to use the edges you know that I like to use absolutely every little bit can't have any wastage put that in there and this just brings it there we go Take the batting off. Let me take a pick tool. Fabulous. And then you can hide that little bit of a boob there. Nobody would ever know. And then I wasn't sure actually about a bow. You could put silver and silver embellishments. I just used some of the um, in colour baker twine. Um, I've used here the um, the dark one, which is Starry Sky, but you could actually use the um, Orchid Oasis. I'm just going to tie a little bow with that as it's cut. Waste not, want not. And actually, because it's got the white as well, I think it goes quite nicely. So, trim those tails off. Oh, actually, they're not too bad. Not too bad. We get a little, little bow there. I think I might have headbutted the camera there. Sorry about that. Come on, stick that under there. I should have done that before, made that on before. And then again, I was umming and ahhing about gems, but I've gone back to my trusty iridescent uh, rhinestones, and I'm going to put a big one in there and just scatter. A few around and there we have it and they those they those wings fly in and then that is just uh, I think that measures 11 centimeters so it still goes into 
our standard C5, uh, C, C5 envelopes. What do you think? Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me. I'll put links to everything below and um, I hope to see you again really soon. Bye for now.